Let's remember, I stand for freedom. Let, no, you? let me give it to you this way, okay. Donnie. If, if, if America is changing because the, of the war on terrorism, then the terrorists are winning. Because we may be beating them on the battlefield, but if we're getting our freedoms taken away and America changes because of what terrorisms do, the fear of terrorism and government there to protect us, well, then, the, in my opinion, the terrorists are winning. But, Je but Jesse, you have to admit, if we don't do something, the reality is terrorism is a new kind of war, and it's nothing we've faced in our over 200-year history and some things have to be done differently. This is a different kind of enemy. And to put your head in the sand and say, well, we can't change anything, I just nobody's, think it's ignorant. Wait a minute. Nobody's putting their head in the sand. We're as ill-prepared for terrorism as we've ever been. Take a look at the hurricanes that just hit this country. They were even announced three to four days ahead of time. Okay. Now, when the terrorists hit us, do you think they're going to send us a memo? telling us three to four days ahead of time we're going to hit you, get prepared. We couldn't even handle what happened in New Orleans, and yet we're being sold by our politicians that we're safer today, that we're out there protecting you. We've got this big government bureaucratic agency on terrorism that's going to protect you. It's a bunch of hogwash, Donnie, and if you believe it, you're naive. Jesse, uh, you once said you think there should be a restaurant in the White House 2008, so you're the guy in charge now. How do we make ourselves safer from terrorism it's easy to throw stones give me some answers yeah well the first thing would be to go get a terrorist that attacked us you know we're never successful until bin laden is seven feet under okay. and instead we're now fighting in iraq a country that never attacked us there wasn't one terrorist in 9 11 from iraq okay. 15 of the 19 were from saudi arabia 48 percent of the insurgents you hear about in iraq right now are saudis why are we fighting the Iraqis? It's about the same... It, wait, if we went back to World War II for a moment, when the Japanese attacked Pearl Harbor, maybe we should have attacked Korea. After all, they're Asian, too. Mm -hmm. Look, you my know, friend, that's the mindset you, that was used You here. wouldn't get an argument from this show. Strategically, that was certainly not the most judicious way to spend $200 billion, spend $200 billion to fight terrorism. But so what do we do? Okay, let's say now you got to go get Bin Laden. Why can't we find this guy? This is the one question I don't understand. He's a six foot six Arab guy. We have unlimited funds to spend. You put a billion dollars on his head as a reward. Why can't we get this guy? Because uh, I don't think we want him that bad. You sh how, tell me what makes you say that. Why don't we, why don't we, we want him that bad? Because we should have gotten him. That's what tells me that. We've had since 9-11-01 to get this guy. And we failed miserably. But the statement that we don't want him bad, I think it's hard, it's hard to fight. It's another question why we haven't found him, but to say we don't want him, like you say there's some political agenda reason we wouldn't want Osama bin Laden? Well, I'll tell you why we couldn't do that. We need our military on the oil spigot over there. And we cannot have our military away from the oil spigot because we're so dependent upon it. Hulk Hogan, your old buddy, said that. He took a survey when Clinton was in an office, and he would have beat him 75 to 25 percent. Are we living in a world right now that just pure popularity, people know your name, and it's good enough to be a public official? This guy's never done anything but wrestling. He's never stepped outside of wrestling in his life. And So what's wrong with being a wrestler? That's kind of what you started, big guy. Nothing, but I was also, a, no it isn't, I was a Navy SEAL before I was a wrestler. I spent six years Four. in the United States Navy. You're in the, uh, you're in the I Philippines? served. I first served 17 months in Southeast Asia, so I did a lot of things before I got into wrestling. I just got every third week in August is the SEAL Team reunion where we all go out to Coronado, California, and we get briefed. And uh, our SEALs today are the best they've ever been. They're the most well-educated. They're the best trained. They have more equipment that we only dream of having the equipment that they have today. Right. We used to have to beg, borrow, and steal it. Today they get it handed to them. So, Jesse, who are we backing for president in 08? Who's your choice? Uh, me, if I run. Okay. Uh, you want to announce something here tonight? No, I don't. Uh, I don't want to announce anything, but uh, I would tell you this again. Let me reiterate. If Hillary Clinton gets the nomination and gets elected in 08, that will mean since 1988 to all the way to 2012, we will have had only Clintons or Bushes in the White House. It looks to me like we're a dual monarchy. 24 years, two names. Good point, sir. Uh, you have to remember with me, Democrats and Republicans are cut from the same cloth. Really, today we have a decision. It's like walking into the grocery store and you go to the, uh, the soft drink department and the only thing you're offered is Coke and Pepsi. 
They're both colas, one slightly sweeter than the other, but that's the only choice you get in this country. Uh, and think about it a minute. I remember I was on uh, Larry King once with Senator Alan Simpson, and he, he was expounding the two-party system to me and, and to Larry King. And, and, and I didn't say a word, and Larry finally said, Governor, what do you think of the two-party system? I said, I think it's phenomenal. We get one more choice than communist Russia. Well, I actually do think, you know, I, I think this country is ready. If the right candidate came along, boy, I, I don't think they'll need a label on them. You know, when we come back, when we take a break, I'm going to do a little name association with you. I'm going to throw so, Donnie, you think if I get a haircut and then cut my beard off, you'd support me? Uh, right now, we've got to do a little more talking, friend, because I see what you're doing is you're throwing a lot of stones, but I don't hear answers. So, uh, you know, I like your um, chutzpah, as we say, but I'm still not hearing any answers. I'm just hearing well, a lot of complaints. Well, ask me something I can give you. I, I, what haven't I given I, you an answer You didn't answer give me on. any suggestions of how you said, you know what, where our civil liberties are being, you know, encroached upon, we're vis-a-vis uh, -vis fighting terrorism. So I said, well, what do we do to make ourselves safer? And I still don't hear any answers, though. Get bin Laden. I, great. How do we that do that? That was an answer. Okay, obviously we all want bin Laden, but we can't wave a magic wand, so if we can't do that, if we don't have bin Laden, how do we make ourselves safer as a country? You know, we're going to take a break now. When we come back... When we take a break, when we come back, I'll tell you how it's impossible to make us safer as a country. Okay, you're talking to the ex-governor, the new look ex-governor, Jesse Ventura. Keep it here. He's going to continue to be shy and reserved when we come back. Don't go anywhere. All right, governor, we're going to do a little word association. I'm going to throw out some names. No, no, Donnie, I want to get back to what you talked about earlier on terrorism and protecting ourselves from Yes, sir, from you were it. going to give some answers, correct. Well, I'm going to give you an answer right now. You give me Dick Marcinko, myself, and eight of our other former SEALs, and ten of us will paralyze the whole nation. How do you mean? Simple. Look what the two, look what the two guys did, the snipers. They paralyzed four states and 20 million people, and they weren't even that good. You take five coordinated sniper teams, put them in five different locations around this country and start randomly killing people, and you would bring us to a freeze. Of you course, would bring America to a freeze. Well, of course you would, Jesse. You know, five lunatics, you know, strap grenades, that, and walk well, into five different malls, you'll cripple the country. So, I mean, what are you saying? Well, and, th and that's what I'm telling you. How do you protect against that? Well, you're not giving an how, answer. How do you, why do you take away freedoms to stop that? Because what, taking away freedoms what, is look, not going to stop I keep, that. I want to ask you about something else. You're talking about the media. We have a lot of packaged media these days. Bill O'Reilly, what's your thoughts on him from Fox? Well, I think they're all, uh, they're all the same. Most of these media guys are all a bunch of chicken hawks. You know what a chicken hawk is, don't you? Tell me what it should tell our audience what a chicken hawk is. Well, a chicken hawk is a person when it was their time to serve and go to war and be in the military, they were chicken, but they come back 20, 25 years later and now they're hawks. They want to go to war, they want to kick everyone's butt because they don't have to do it now. Was Bill That's a look, chicken not, hawk. Bill O'Reilly and I are not friends, but in fairness to him, did he ever duck out on service or anything? Do we have any proof about him being a chicken? He never served, neither okay. did Hannity, neither did uh, Limbaugh. Uh, do you want the list to go on and on with all these guys that support the war and support kicking butt? There's a difference. And none of them ever did it themselves. That's a very that's a that's the kind of the Colin Powell school of thought. But there's a difference between guys who didn't weren't called to serve versus guys avoiding serving. Weren't called. Everyone turns 18. Okay, the fact that they didn't volunteer. Where do, where do you get the fact that you weren't called? It's called go down and enlist and then serve your country. Well, there's a difference. You call it, not someone else. But just because somebody doesn't volunteer for the military doesn't mean they're a chicken versus somebody who was drafted and avoids the draft. That's a little bit of a different discussion, I think. No, it isn't. No? Somebody that doesn't volunteer for the military and then comes back 20 years later and wants to go kick everyone's butt with the military, that's a chicken hawk. Okay, fair point. A couple of other folks. Martha Stewart. Uh, all I know is I'm, I, I, w I started walking down dark alleys again when they put Martha in prison because I felt safe. <laughs> uh, let me throw this at you in, on a serious note. Think about this a moment. What did Martha go to prison for? Structural Martha justice. Went to, she went to prison for lying to the government. The insider trading was thrown out. Correct. Now, so in other words, if we lie to our government, we go to prison. Well, I what do. happens when the government lies to us? Well, that's why our democracy, ah, we, get, that's we right. get to vote. We get to vote. Wait a minute, we go to war. When the government lies to us, we go to war. When we lie to the government, we go to prison. Somehow we're getting the raw end of the stick here.